<laughs> right. um, okay. Well, great. So here we are, Coach Jacksonville. And uh, this is what's the day's date? The sixth. Six, six, March the sixth, twenty twenty-three. Can you believe it? Mm -mm. Um, and uh, so what we're gonna we have an amazing program where we're all gonna be leaving here very positive. Uh, because we're going to be intelligently positive or positively intelligent. And then uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to your presentation. Um, so that she'll know who she's talking to. Why don't each one of us um, uh, describe uh, who you are, uh, what's going on in your life. And, um, and I just think something remarkable would be a good way to describe it. Um, um, I'm, I'll go ahead and start. I'm Doug Wilder for Wilder Success. I've been coaching now almost 30 years and um, am loving it, still loving it. Um, and I'm, you would think that I would know everything I need to know, but I'm learning more. Um, one of my clients was just telling me last week about the power of TED. Uh, TED stands for the dynamic, you know, the empowerment dynamic. And it's taken the Cartman triangle and now given instructions on how to take the Cartman drama triangle, victim, persecutor, rescuer, and convert that into something that's positive. So, so I'm looking forward to this program to see how that ties into it. So I just finished the book Sunday, started writing my synopsis of it. Uh, it'll be coming out in a in a uh, blog as soon as Alana can take my, my language that I gave to her. And, <laughs> and make it into something good. So that's what's happening in my world. I mean, just just having a ball. All right. So my name is Heather Cosgrove. Um, I am, let's see, I spent about 21 years in human resources, relocated to Jacksonville um, about eight years ago, and um, had a really difficult time finding a job in HR. I got very involved in Sherm Jacksonville, and as I mentioned earlier, I uh, have just left a two-year term as the president of Sherm Jacksonville, so I've been on the board for over seven years now. Um, I decided to make a cheer career change about six years ago, so I got into real estate, and you know, I'm finding myself right now where I was pretty much kind of a full-time volunteer and feel like somewhat part-time, full-time realtor, um, and now all of a sudden I'm kind of shifting into really putting that volunteer going back into part-time volunteering and now really kind of getting my business into full swing. And so trying to kind of put some of that on the back burner and try and figure out how do I put myself into my business full-time and especially being you know newer to Jacksonville, um, how to build my business and trying to think of unique ways to kind of bring clients in. And I'm struggling with that right now, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and so trying to be creative in that sense um, and really kind of put myself um, you know, kind of full force into this part of my career. Good. So yeah, good for you. So that's what I'm doing. What a challenge! Yes, I absolutely. Love, love yeah. Remember, every problem is merely a challenge, not yet converted into an opportunity. Absolutely, so, huge opportunity yes, here. Exactly. <laughs> Not hard to go, but up. Yep. <laughs> Bob, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name's Bob Zinzer, and my company is Getting the Game Southeast. Um, I just celebrated 13 years in January um, of the company being formed. Um, it was as a result of a um, downsizing of a very large corporation based in Miami as well as Atlanta. Um, and I said, you know what? I'm done with this. Um, I was, uh, I was, my business was growing. I was making six-figure salary. Things were wonderful. I was traveling and come to find out that they just were getting ready to dissolve that whole unit mm -hmm. that they hired me to reinvigorate and um, just change in direction. And I found out later that it was because they were cutting expenses. So we got rid of the six-figure salary and took my yeah. responsibilities and gave it to three people that mm -hmm. were, you know, brand new and underpaid. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, oh, good. I'm, I, I'm, I really enjoy having my own business and the work that I do. Um, I do sales coaching with all kinds of organizations across the board, no limitation. I've worked with high-end software development companies that need to build a sales force and uh, work with them to, to generate business. But also uh, pest control company, Trads. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Denise, um, the right. owner, her dad, I guess, just recently officially retired from the business, mm -hmm. but um, worked with them 
um, something, you know, go out and talk with a customer on, you want to quote on your pest control. Mm, um, nice. I've done a lot of work in, in Elena. Um, I've done work in other areas, or Layla, Le Le sorry, Layla. Le it's Leila. Leila. Just okay. like Sheila, but with an L. Yeah, my wife's name is Leila. N-E-I-L-A. Well, there you go. She's like no, Leila. <laughs> but if you speak Spanish, it would be Leila. So I don't okay. like, I well, don't speak argue. Spanish, so I can't use that as an excuse. Um, but I've done work with um, Covey programs, Smart Conversations, um, which is the other half of uh, Crucial Conversations. Um, that was a group. Um, so, you know, talking about um, how do you stay mad, frustrated? How does that serve you? Um, those types of things. Yeah. Um, very powerful work. I've done a lot of work in behavior assessments. Um, and that's just fascinating work. Um, there's just so much power in that. And I've worked with three different companies, but now most recently, close to in South Florida. Um, what's going on in my life? I'm really starting to enjoy my kids from a whole different perspective with seeing them succeed and grow and their children. And, you know, just, it's just a, a, an exciting time. So I plan to do a lot more traveling up north, um, mostly by car, but I enjoy driving. So 13 hours is not a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. just did that last week. So anyway, um, mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm really looking to grow my business as a um, an additional source of income. Um, you know, it's from an income standpoint, the pressure's off. Um, so that helps. Um, you're not worrying where the next customer is coming from. But interestingly enough, I've got two proposals out right now. So I think that's your big time ticket items from the future. So that's me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Hey everybody, I am Heidi Aderman. I'm an Opportunity Igniter and the Life Coach That Rocks. <laughs> and um, I've, over the last couple months, I've really started working more and more with musicians and other people that are in the music industry. I recently started working with a photographer that really specializes in taking pictures of bands and things like that. So that's been kind of fun because he's, He's been doing this for a long time, but it's really at a hobby level. And there's he's built like such a following with all of the musicians in the area that he's he's proved himself and he's ready to like take it to the next step, which is ask for money. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what we're working on. Um, and exciting things that are happening for me right now. I honestly was going to talk about how incredible the last six weeks have been with this uh coaches grant that I had through positive intelligence mm -hmm. so like I'm just going to give like a little story before we get into it <laughs> um I went to an archery tournament this weekend it was it's like the biggest one in the state of Florida for the springtime and I competed against um five other women in my class so that not like what the men's competition is but you know I still had competition I got second place Oh, oh wow and um since i started taking this i started applying the pq reps to my archery That's because so cool. the archery game most of it is up here mm -hmm. and at this particular tournament there is a lot of palm trees and like things hanging down like right in front of your face and like <laughs> and you're supposed to hit this target where you can't even really see like where you're supposed to hit it and so your head talk is just like, this is stupid. Like, there's no way you're going to hit this. Like, what? And I literally was just like, okay, judge, psh, you're not helpful right now. And I was like, we're going to go through the shot cycle. So I let the sage just talk me through it and listen to these are the steps to be successful and hit the target. And when I did that consciously, I hit the target. I got like nine tens on my life. Gotta get out well, here. Right yeah. So mm -hmm. yes. And so this is very cool. I'm very excited for all you guys here. <laughs> so <laughs> then we can all become archers and compete. <laughs> That's okay. You guys can. I'll take you all over to the archery club. You guys are all welcome at any time. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm Alana Salifolia which as you can see, this is my name here. <laughs> but um, that's, I was 
testing the virtual part to make sure it worked. It did. Um, but yeah, I am Doug's marketing manager. I work on his website. I do social media. Um, and I work for uh, an employment lawyer and an HR expert also in this building doing similar things. Um, and then something extraordinary, or what, which word did remarkable you? Remarkable. Remarkable. Maybe extraordinary for me. <laughs> um, so I'm, work-wise, I'm helping Doug with a book um, and it's on de-stress tools. And the cool thing about it is that I get to absorb some of the wisdom <laughs> while I'm doing it. And then I'll think of it on the weekend. I'll be like, oh man, <laughs> like, like this is, a, it, it's, it's positive. It's encouraging, um, practical. So that's really useful. So they're all Dougisms in my head, like the like what he just said about challenges. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other book is I'm writing a fiction um, novel that's uh, like a romantic comedy type story about um, an accountant from Orlando who falls in love with a girl um, at, who works at a farmer's market in Florence. So mm -hmm. that's the story. Italy. Yes, Florence, Italy. So he, he goes on vacation and <laughs> loves wounds. Mm -hmm. so. And oh, and, it, and he's also like very interested in wine. I haven't decided if he's trying to buy a vineyard or not. Mm. So it's it's in progress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I joined Bold City Writers, a group to help uh, with accountability. So oh, cool. Yeah. You like accountability, don't you? I do. <laughs> Big fan. Okay. <laughs> See hides one coaching. Okay. Um moving on. That's cool. My husband and I met on a vacation, a ski vacation. <gasps> That'll be a cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'll write your book next. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your niche. Vacation romance. They can have bakery wine, wine is good too. Yes. No, but um, so I'm Leela Wallet, and um, thank y'all for coming, and thank you for inviting me to present. Absolutely. Doug just um called me or emailed me, "What are you doing in March?" I'm like, "No, oh, nothing. I guess I'll mm -hmm. come and see you." So, um, what is extraordinary going on with me right now is our 18 year old son is fixing to graduate <laughs> high school. And I'm from Texas. The fixing two came out. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um and he uh just finished up the golf season we talked about golf a little bit and he um she got an award i forget which one i don't think it was the falcon it was the coach award maybe i forget but he's like won um the one of the two biggest awards from his team in the last two years so we're really proud of him and he's finishing up a bunch of papers um for his international baccalaureate program and he has chosen his college and that's the next st hurdle getting the housing and all that stuff so that's been extraordinary what Probably. school he's going to go to saint leo university yeah. okay. in saint leo florida yeah. out yeah. in the middle of nowhere oh, <laughs> our friend, our friend that went there. north of tampa mm -hmm. yeah must be really a lot of people i haven't heard of it. i haven't mm -hmm. so um yeah my son was graduated from there i think what? I think my son was graduated from there. From St. Leo. Leo, you think? Well, because he went to Rollins College okay. and was there four years, but he hadn't quite finished. Oh, so then so he, he so did the correspondence. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think they have a big online presence. And I've noticed, you know, in Jacksonville, like one of the exits at St. Leo University, I'm like, no, nah, they're way mm -hmm. over off Tampa. But I guess they have a lot of online. I saw one in Winston. Miami, um, over here, mm -hmm. uh, Orlando. I'm like, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, it's getting, you know, when you're introduced to something, you see it all the time. Oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I've been coaching about seven years and I have an HR background. I uh, was an HR manager at a hospital system for 10 years in St. Louis. And then um, other um, healthcare organizations before that. Most of my experience is with like home care and hospice, mm -hmm. HR support, and the hospital I supported. It was the hospital-based home care, hospice, eye care, pharmacy. So um, not just nursing. You know, you think hospitals, nursing physicians. I did it like everything else <laughs> from an HR support standpoint. Mm -hmm. And um, I got really, really burned out one 
after a couple of years of laying people off and being the go-to HR person that was good at it, mm -hmm. and I got good at it, mm -hmm. and I was bracing for my own layoff, and I didn't get laid off, and I was hoping I would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was burnt out, and I was like, okay, give me the severance. This is okay, because I had been laid off previously, and I've always been a glass half full kind of girl thinking positive not negative and I had been laid off before and there's light at the end of the tunnel there is um, always something maybe not the grass is greener but there are other opportunities and there are things that are there's a reason for everything there's these little sayings you know Leela isms too I guess <laughs> that I kind of lived by and so when I was introduced to positive intelligence I'm pointing to the book I brought it if anybody wants to look at it um that it really resonated with me so anyway back to when I wasn't laid off I stayed about six months longer and finally quit after the reorg and um stayed home for almost five years and you know volunteered with my son's um school and then I discovered coaching and I was like coaching um you know what kind of coaching well helping people find jobs I was like, oh my gosh they seem for everything because I used to lay people off and I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah, I want to do the opposite. Uh, and when I was that HR person, people internally would come to me for help with their resume yeah. or help with, you know, how do I find a job? I've been here 30 years. I'm like, you know, there's five other hospitals in the city. Where do you think you should look for a job? <laughs> yes, I know they're the devil because they're our competitor, but hey, they hire people too, but your skills and your talents, and they may not be the devil after you get a good job <laughs> more, you know, <laughs> and so it was, it was where I started, but I didn't know that I was doing some career coaching back then, but funny enough, I started coaching for relocations, because my sister-in-law worked at this company that, that did it, she's like, you'd be good at it, and I was like, oh, no, I, I just want to lay low for a while, and after about four years, I finally started, so, um, and with my HR background, I was I was a recruiter in most of that role, recruitment manager, et cetera. And so the marriage of job search with some of these relocations really reson resonated because with relocations, we focused on the spouse partner and um, helped them with their job search in the new city where, um, you know, maybe you and I could partner with people moving into the new city. And, see that, and that's the funny thing. Like when Alana and I met up the other night at the Jack's Chamber event and she was talking about you and you being here, I said to her, I said, one of the things that I, because I was in HR for so long, one, I'm a Navy brat, so I moved around my entire life. Nice. And then in HR, I worked for an international company and I did a lot of relocations yeah. for folks coming over yeah. um, across the pond. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, you know, so I'm sitting here now kind of getting into you know, real estate. And I'm like, okay, how do I get into some of the smaller companies in Jacksonville that may not have a relocation policy, oh, yeah. may only relocate one person every couple of years. Exactly. But how do you have somebody that you know and trust that mm -hmm. you can say, hey, you know, I have a great realtor that can, you know, give you information on local area schools, local area, you know, subdivisions and those types yeah. of things to maybe take you around while you're here interviewing to get you familiar, you know, with the area. Um, I'm like, company doesn't need to pay me. I don't get paid until I get to the closing table, sure. you know, type of thing. So how do I kind of parlay that into, right. I know what you're going through as an HR partner, trying to recruit somebody, trying to get yeah. them to bring their whole family, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, here to Jacksonville, but also, you know, kind of provide a service as well. And so when she was talking, I was like, I need to come and talk to her because I'm like, this is, this is what I'm trying to figure out how to do and how to get, you know, kind of into okay. some of these companies yeah. and talk with them to say, Hey, you know, let's partner together. You know, how can I help you exactly. and you potentially we we know now that there's a huge hybrid environment and a lot of folks working from home yeah we're still relocating i mean yeah he's exactly. going back into the workplace and saying hey time out like mm -hmm. this is not working anymore you know we, we need to kind of get back into that camaraderie mm -hmm. collaboration and such and we want you to come back into the workforce um so yeah yeah well, i feel you i know interesting <laughs> what you what you've been going through yeah so um <laughs> So basically, I have been doing some um, outplacement career coaching, though, for the last couple of years. Um, and when I was doing the relocation coaching, I, I also did a lot of recruiting. I would hire coaches all around the world for the relocation coaching. 
because we had clients that were moving people everywhere. And um, so, so then with the pandemic, they didn't need a recruiter. <laughs> Nobody was moving. And so I lost my job and that's when I made it official and got my certification in coaching. And I had been trained internally in coaching through um, Impact Group, the relocation coaching firm. And um, so then they called me back because the vaccine happened <laughs> and people started moving again and they didn't start moving really until it, it was not, not so much here. I had projects globally. So it was interesting when I came back I'm part-time with them just doing recruiting mostly and mostly filling people around the world where we had lost during the pandemic or they got jobs because we weren't doing the relocations. They didn't, we didn't have the business for the, those contract coaches. So, um, and then in the meantime, I started working with outplacement um, career coaching. There were so many people that lost their jobs in, um, during the pandemic, you mm -hmm. know, including me. And yet I had experienced this before and was like, okay, well, coaching and job search, this is a great marriage for me. So I got the certification. I started my practice, got to know Doug. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, but anyway, so I've been kind of concentrating on that. And when positive intelligence came, it was like, like, like I said, it, to me, it was like, okay, I've always been that half glass half full <laughs> glass person and um, glass half full. And um, it just really resonated me. So um, it it's really been interesting on how I can use it because my certification was in life coaching. It wasn't a career coaching. It was, I started it with just life coaching in general. Um, and I just haven't gone, the, I know how to do career coaching. So if I want to get that specialization, great, but that's what I do. So when positive intelligence came along, that was very interesting to me to get that because it's actually, they, they call it mental, it's about mental fitness. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, you know, around the room, what does mental fitness mean to you? Um, I, I look at it as really um, continuing to learn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm a voracious learner, reader. I mean, I'm so stupid. I read Mint Magazine. You know, it comes out <laughs> once a week. I just want to see what's going on out sure, there. Sure, sure. Half of those are your customers. I am, yeah, and I am a, in the market for offense. So, you know, but um, I mean, I read a lot. Um, and, and I'm constantly, I have a, a Word document full of books and the authors that I've been given throughout the years that. If I started reading today and didn't stop and did only reading, I would not outlive that list. Oh my goodness! Um, that's I right. have books I want to get to. I got to prioritize because yeah. you know I'm, I'm going to miss out on some good books. But I just look at it as you know, con continually staying on top of what's going on in, in the industry in the market. Mm -hmm. Certainly with my business, um, you know, what's the the types of things that are being talked about. Um, you know, artificial intelligence, there's a lot being talked about that and how that's going to affect a lot of things. And the, the comment even came out, is there a need for salespeople? Oh my goodness. Um, which would directly affect um, my business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. I think it's got a lot of ways to go. But um, so I look at it as just continually learning, yeah. um, keeping yourself mentally active. Definitely. And then there's also physical fitness that is part of that. Um, when you think of physical fitness, you know, what comes to mind? Is it working out? Is it endurance? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so is it going to the gym? Could be running, exercise. whatever. Yeah, exercise. Just getting outside. Yeah, it just yeah. depends on where you are and yeah. your ability. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I used to be a big runner. But now I have I've, I've had back problems, and Pilates is my go-to mm. physical fitness. It's very good for you. It builds the core strength. It helps my back. And there you go. You so like you have you're... to build those muscles, right? Yeah. And so mental fitness is about building your mental muscle. And it's true that um, we actually have you know you know the right side and the left side of the brain, but there's different synapses. Now I'm not the scientist in the room but there is science to help me out if you can when when you need to <laughs> when you want to Heidi. um but there are different parts of the brain 
that with that, and you mentioned, you know, getting outside, you mentioned the, the building the muscles and um, there's, there's kind of all of that using our different senses in building our, the right side of the brain, not the wrong side, but the right side, mm -hmm. whatever pieces that is. Um, but mostly there's right brain activity. Um, and then with that, and I'll, I'm going to show some slides that kind of show some of that, but with that, not, not just yet, but right. I'm going to ask you real quick, um, when you don't feel so mentally healthy, when you get mad or frustrated, you know, how long do you stay in that state? Sometimes a little bit too long. Like, I mean, holding a, a grudge, especially in my business, and I, I need to learn to let that go, that clients will come and go. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, and you think that you've been wronged by certain people because you've worked to help them kind of get to where they need to be. And then they just kind of drop you mm -hmm. and taking that mm -hmm. personally, because you're, you're trying so hard and you feel like you've done a good job. And then somebody kind of walks away from you. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And, and I think I just, I take it a little bit too personally and I internalize it and I hold on to that for way too long sometimes. And I need yeah. to learn to just let it go. People will come and go out of your life yeah. and that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I've just noticed in this business that I hold a grudge a little bit too yeah. long. <laughs> and I shouldn't do that because then yeah. that does because impact that because you. Because it impacts me right. mentally and physically. And I'm like, this is, this is crazy. Like I should not let this, you know, get me down because there, there are way too many other positive things in my life going on. And it's like, that's okay. It's not a problem. It, they, they left for a reason and mm -hmm. it's probably a good thing. And that's what I kind of need to keep telling myself. There's a reason for everything. Absolutely. <laughs> you got it. So, okay, let's look at these slides. And um, so Shurzad Shamin is the creator of positive intelligence. And some of these slides are um, the ones that Positive Intelligence Corporation created. So I want to give them that. I want to give them their credit, even though it doesn't say on here. It says on you one of them that to to make the changes for it or just the one. No, just the one big slide. Oh, 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 the overview slide. The All first, right. the slide number one. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was slide number one. So basically, men mental fitness uses positive intelligence, and you can basically grow three of your core mental muscles, um, which we'll talk about later. This is what um, you're looking for, right? You got it. Yeah. Let's make it easy. Just keep it here. Okay. So um, it's basically the um, philosophy of, you know, we all have challenges, right? We all have negative emotions. Those are hard to like. Um, but how long do you stay in that negative? And how can you get out of that by realizing, okay, is, is there always something, you know, better or good that could come out? Sometimes you don't feel that right away and that's normal too. And that's okay. But mental fitness using positive intelligence is, helps you kind of um, work on that goal of not being upset forever and not holding that grudge maybe. Um, and realizing, okay, what is the gift out of this? Or what are the opportunities that I can turn this challenge into? And that's kind of the core um, goal of, of positive intelligence. And then as opposed to staying in that negative mindset. So there are a million ways, there's three things listed here, but a million ways that this can impact your life and you know your performance at work, your peace of mind, your just your happiness quotient, I guess, um, and then relationships. So your sales, you know, your um, your ability to pivot, if that's what you need to do, um, just all kinds of, uh, well, actually part of the app and, and part of the, the book, it parenting, um, I started getting very interested in that part of it. Um, and it's, there's PQ for kids that have started out of this. It's quite amazing. So there's just a lot of ways that this can impact 
Can you remember you're in the program right now? And I've been, I just want to say like one really powerful visual he has, because some people are like, well, you know, it's bad for me to suppress like my negative emotions. Like you might kind of get that argument. Mm -hmm. So think of it like when you touch a hot stove mm -hmm. and so your senses tell you, okay, that's hot. That is painful. Like, and what you do then is you take your hand off of the hot stove. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like you don't leave it there. Thank you. You would leave it there and your hand would be like terribly burnt. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. if you compare that to Staying the pain those, of negative emotions, those negative it's the emotions. same thing. Your negative emotions are saying, hey, <laughs> there's something to pay attention to over here. Right. And if but you're not doing anything about it, you're just keeping your hand on the stove. You're staying in the pain. Right. And I, that was so, such a powerful visual. For it me. was one of the slides I had to include. <laughs> so I agree. And it's so funny because I've talked with other people that I've coached and like two of them immediately mentioned, oh, the hand on the hot stove, you got to, when I was preparing for this, you got to include that. And I was like, I will, I will. That <laughs> is a great yeah. visual. And it's part of the story, I believe, that is most impactful. Um, but going back, just let's look at this just because they're, I wanted to the first slide. Yeah, we're second. Okay. Second okay. one's great. So positive intelligence uses truly positive psychology, neuroscience, and then cognitive psychology and performance science. There is actually they have done some studies um, about the science of the brain and what signs are effective after um, you know, going through this program basically. And the right side was just a, a lot more affected. And then the next slide, we'll kind of talk about that. Um, so the there are um, basically pieces of, you know, why we keep our hands on the hot stove, which is the next slide, but um, why we're, you know, why do we create these roadblocks for us? Why do we keep our hand on, you know, is that serving us? And um, basically what positive intelligence is also teaching us is how to get your hand off that hot stove and how to recognize that, you know, hey, I am in a negative state of mind. So what's going on there? And he came up with saboteurs. I like calling our saboteurs that little devil that sits on your shoulder. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's what came to mind when I first started this program. It's like that little silly devil that sits on your shoulder that says, no, you're not good enough, or no, you can't, or no, that client left me because I must not be good at this, mm -hmm. you know, or, oh, I haven't gotten the clients that I want to yet, you know, um, there's, there's 10 in total, um, oh, and then, well, but there's, and we'll go through the, the 10, um, starting with the judge that you mentioned earlier, and then there is the more right side of the brain, which we are going to try to, you know, build our mental muscle. And it's really affecting the right side, which he calls the sage. And the sage um, is where the positive emotions actually lie. And again, they've kind of even taken some scientific pictures of it. And those are the brain synopses that are fired up. So that that's my little brain image there and then the next one i think is the hand on the hot stove mm -hmm. so um we've talked about that and the, let's go to the next one so these are the actual saboteurs on this side it's my left <laughs> and then the the five sage powers are on the right so judge is universal everybody has a judge that's the little devil um mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this um, visual that was created um, by somebody on Shirzaz's team or maybe one of the PQ, co PQ coaches is a great um, visual of it. That on this side, the, these, this is a list of the accomplices along with the judge. Um, and when you're on that negative side, you've got when you score, because there's some assessments in, within this, when you score under 75, you're kind of in that negative mindset most of your day. <laughs> 
Um, when you start doing these, um, we call them PQ sessions, PQ meaning positive intelligence. Um, when you do these little mental fitness exercises, you start building that sage side, the right side of your brain and start building these powers instead using empathy instead of judgment and exploring, innovate, navigating and activate ultimately. But when those are, you know, those are tied with positive emotions like peace and calm, happiness in general, positivity, um, creativity, all kinds of possibilities. The negative emotions can be anything from insecurity, stress, shame, blame. Um, the judge is very interesting because we fall into it daily and you can either be in the mindset of judging yourself that, oh, you know, what did I do to lose that customer? It's my fault and internalize. Um, or we might um, see someone on the side of the road and make a judgment like, uh, what a loser. <laughs> He's looking for a job mm -hmm. and has to hold a sign out, you know, uh, you know, and um, whereas you could empathize and say, man, what a, what a hard knock way to go. I hope he gets a job soon, as opposed to that really negative um, reaction. Mm -hmm. And that's judging others that we, you know, we might do daily in our lives with our spouses, kids, um, friends, whatever. Um, the circumstance that we can judge. Have you ever felt like, okay, well, it's really not that great with whatever, my house, my apartment. I can't wait until I have another one because then my problems will be over. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then you get that new house. It's like, okay, come on. This needs to be fixed now. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's not always that the grass is greener. There's always, um, you know, you're always going to want to be happy no matter where you are. It, you are just going to stay in that negative mindset of, gee, my circumstance isn't good. Yes, it is. There's going to be good stuff. What can you get out of it? What gifts, what opportunities can you get out of any of this? So with the judge that we all have come some accomplices. The avoider, um, these are for more or less um, alphabetical. Avoider is my top one. And not just because it's at the top of this, but um, the avoider is kind of your procrastinator. You know, I didn't get your slides until Sunday, right? Monday, <laughs> that was my avoider. It's still there. Um, <laughs> controller, have you ever met somebody that you just knew had a very controlling personality? I bet you they score high on the controller. So hyperachiever, yeah, I was gonna say, I, you know, you know people that are just work so hard and they, they just, that's what all they wanna do is ever work. And I'm not. I'm an avoider. <laughs> mm. My hyper achiever is like way down here. Um, although I do like succeeding. So <laughs> hyper rational is somebody that's like what, what Shirzad calls somebody that might be always on that data channel. The data channel is more of the left brain facts, you know, analysis, as opposed to the right sage side of the brain where it's creative. And I happen to have a son that is very rational. Yeah. Keep telling him you'd be a great attorney, but he's going to go into the business school instead. So great, <laughs> whatever. Um, we'll see what happens. Hyper um, vigilant is somebody that's like always hand on the hot stove, very protective because somebody's going to like come and rob the house or hurt my kid or whatever, or mm -hmm. hurt the business, you know, just over the top. Did you say a worrier? Would that be? Very much a worrier. Okay. Yeah. My husband is like, I thought he was going to be major hypervigilant. And I love the fact that he is a very protective person. But sometimes when we're driving down the road and he's like, oh my gosh, did you see that person? He almost hit me. And I'm like, we're still driving. And he didn't hit you, honey. <laughs> you know, you know, aren't you over there? You know, he's just like over the top sometimes. Pleaser, um, you know, you can sometimes be in that mode because you want to make people happy. You want to serve your customers. You want to get more customers. So how can I um, be a pleaser all the time yet 
um, it's usually the over the top pleaser is perhaps somebody that goes so far with it that then they never do anything for themselves and mm -hmm. the people don't trust them. They don't, they don't know what's going to, you know, make them happy because they're always so busy of, of like just over the top. What can I do for you? So restless is another one that I'm kind of high on and it kind of comes with a void, um, avoider and the restless is, and again, jump in anytime you, you think of something that I'm missing. Um, my restless is higher too. Yeah. It's like, okay. Oh my gosh. My husband is this too. Um, you know, okay. I'm going to read this book. And then you just talked about a really cool, you talked about a really cool book. What are they? Can I write them? I'm going to go stop. And I, I don't, I don't finish this <laughs> or, oh my gosh, real estate sounds really fun for me. I love coaching, but maybe I want to get my real estate license. You know, it's like, you've got a lot of stuff going on and it's like, oh my goodness. And then you may not succeed at really any, anything. Um, that's like the over the top restless victim is, oh, worry, worry a little bit, but oh, woe is me. Um, a little bit of that G circumstance. If, if, um, you know, oh, if my husband made more money, I wouldn't have to work so hard. Or if, um, if my son, you know, didn't hang out with this person, then, you know, maybe he'd do better at school or whatever. I, I have an example of, it was like, it's like the judge combined with the victim when I was single and seeing all of my friends get married and then having mm -hmm. babies and it just be like another baby on Facebook. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so my counselor was like, you can't spend that time like being frustrated with that comparison. That's you awesome. need to celebrate with them. So it's like, yeah. so, and so that was just like taking such, such a negative feeling and it's probably con combining the empathy and the yeah. anthropology to say like, wow, this is awesome for them. Mm -hmm. Like, and I get a little friend. <laughs> so. A little friend. Exactly. It's interesting that you say that too, because like the judge really does trigger the other saboteurs. Yes. That's why they're the accomplices. Um, like as I got into the program was calling out the judge, then I would notice like my, my other higher, um, accomplices, like mm -hmm. chiming into the head talk, like literally like another voice that's just like, yeah, they're totally right. Like, I don't know. Why. Like, mm -hmm. You yeah. think that you could take a break right now. Like you've got so much work you got to do before tomorrow. Like that's stupid. You don't deserve a break right now. And I'm like, <laughs> come on guys, like stop. Like, one on each shoulder. <laughs> no, they just keep multiplying yeah. over here. And I'm like, yeah. it's getting really heavy over here. Like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they do. And then stickler is a little bit, in my opinion, like up there with controller or maybe even hyperachiever, but stickler, I have, I have this a lot. It's like, okay, you're going to do it this way and you're going to be really, really organized. Sounds like your son-in-law maybe. And, um, and, you know, label for everything. And then when somebody comes in and just like does it because this is how they've done it all their life. No, no, you can't do it that way. <laughs> you, you know, and it's a little bit controller, but to, it's the stickler with all this organization and you got to do it right. And this perfection you know, there's yeah, but nobody's going to be hundred percent per perfect. So, you know, get over it, you know, get that stickler a little bit off your shoulder. Um, we all, we have all of these. It's just that I, because we're born hardwired with some more than others and life's circumstances also kind of create our own, you know, fears at certain times. Yeah, and past so experiences, oh, I've seen this before. This is what's going to mm -hmm. happen. Not necessarily. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of an overview of the accomplices, the um, sage powers, basically, um, Empathy, explore, innovate, navigate, and activate. So mm -hmm. empathy, one of the biggest um, exercises is to find a picture of yourself um, before you were like 12 years old and look at that. That's your sage. When you were a child, you know, you weren't an adult with all these accomplices. You, you know, they started to come when you were at least four or five, maybe, maybe even two. Uh, and we were born hard hardwired with some. But they didn't start developing until really we were. Here's oh, my... oh, that's cool. Oh, uh, adorable. 
Oh, is it a rock star picture? Very cute. Oh, oh is that your dad? <laughs> yeah. He looks like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, you know, think about it when you look at your own childhood picture and that is who you are empathizing with, especially when you work on that judge. And it's like, how can you be mad at that cute little baby in green that had beautiful blue eyes that you still do, <laughs> which are so, I love that about you. And, um, you know, it's like, how can you, you know, yeah, maybe I did something wrong, but give yourself a break and your empathy will come in when you start working on this to that judge and say, you know, no, um, I'll give myself a break. And maybe there is a reason for this because God's telling me or whatever you believe in spiritually, you know, somebody's telling me something, mother nature, you know, God, Buddha, whatever you practice. And maybe there's a reason for this. And I need to start thinking in a different way, or I need to start hanging out with a different person, whatever it may be. And, um, but it's okay. Give yourself a break, buddy, you know, and then um, explore Again, I really feel like this kind of just helps, you know, not that judge um, instead of kind of reacting to others that, you know, God, that the person's homeless, he must be dirty and stinky, whatever. Um, as a curious anthropologist, it the anthropologists come into excavation sites to learn. Your ask curtain. questions and ask mm, questions clarify don't figure tell yourself out, a story figure out what that culture was like what happened ten thousand years ago whatever not to judge them but to be curious and discerning learning and I there's share a, a true different story that i experienced along that lines um i worked when i first started the company i worked for carmax part-time mm -hmm. and at carmax the system is you have an up so everybody is in line to take the next person who comes through the door. So and you'd see all kinds. You know, you'd see the young kid and sizing him up. Oh, yeah, he's going to want a $3,000 vehicle. Good luck with that. Um, <laughs> but I, I had an up, and I'll never forget this. And I've told this story where this guy walks in, raggedy shirt, dirty clothes, tattooed all over the place not that there's anything wrong with tattoos but just absurd amount of tattoos <laughs> long hair a little like like he had a shower in a long time and I said to myself as he's walking towards me oh great he's gonna want a car and he's not gonna get he's not he probably has bad credit you know just look at him he's a mess walking towards me so I went out and introduced myself and he said yes I'd like to look at your BMWs out there I was like, yeah, I'd like to afford a BMW too, but there's no chance in hell you're going to be able to do that. I mean, and I'm thinking this, I'm telling myself a story the whole way, distracting. Come to find out, looked at a BMW, said, yeah, I'll take it. I said, okay, we well, you need, you need to put a credit app because no, I had cash. He ended up, he was a neuroscientist, something, a <laughs> million dollars, paid cash for a $70,000 used BMW. He was just on a day off and didn't shower, huh? <laughs> but this is going to be a huge waste of time. I was telling myself the story the whole time. So don't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clarify. Yeah. Ask some questions and, and get that out of there. That's a, one of those and, noises. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, it's hard not to sometimes. Right. You know, but at the same time, they're human. They have a baby picture, too. Mm -hmm. So just empathize. Empathize is just the most amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that story. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so innovate. So this one, I like to give an example with my son. I don't know if I've been successful with it yet, though. he's a teenager mm -hmm. and a pretty smart one. Anyway, um, innovate is okay. So if you kind of get in a rut or you you lose a client or maybe there's a pattern of losing a client well then how's about we figure out some new ideas get creative um ha has anybody played the yes and game before mm -hmm. i thought i yes. thought we've probably talked about this in some of these coaching groups i figured if anyone had it yeah yeah and um <laughs> So, yes, you know, but I don't want to always play. Oh, <laughs> yes, and I do play those. Games. Yes, and so, so I try to be 
remember to be in the mindset. It's real hard. And, and it, it's very easy for me just to get back in mom, like, you know, you should do it this way, or you should do it that way. But, you know, if I can remember to be in that yes and mode of not procrastinating and getting the homework done, you know, hey, you know, how how do you think you can get this done differently than, you know, than you have before because you're you're staying up really late? Well, you know, get an idea out of them. It's hard, first of all. But <laughs> and then, yes, what I like about that is that you've come up with, you know, a schedule. Yeah. Time yourself for 30 minutes. And if you're not, you're not finished, just go into the next thing instead, because you can go to the, and maybe you can try it for 15 minutes at a time instead, or an hour, depending on how much homework you have. And, you know, go back and forth with yes, and, and build on some ideas. So that's just my example, because it's, it's just, so hard to try to remember to get out of mom mode mm -hmm. like oh yeah positive intelligence we're going to innovate we're going to try a new idea don't just do the same thing and stay up late all night long and watch your your phone you know that's what I could tell them very easily but if I could just get out of that listen to my sage and knock that saboteur out which one is that controller probably mm -hmm. you know controlling mom I know how to do it you've got to do it this way anyway and um, the mindset Remember that the other person is at least 10% correct. Well, that's why you say yes. What I like about that yes. is, and then the and. So you build on it. You have to, you have to acknowledge that their ideas, far-fetched that they might be, you definitely they have a little bit of validity, no matter what. At least 10%. <laughs> and what I, what I like about that is, <laughs> is the fact that it um, allows like a bad idea. You could start with a really, really bad idea and bounce it back and forth. And since the judge isn't activated, people aren't afraid to throw out some more bad ideas in right. the process. So yeah, it becomes a lot more innovative. Exactly. Innovative, less judgmental, more discerning. Exactly. Yeah, like you say like like a mom's story and like I feel like that's such a mom thing the whole like this is the way to do it and also I think it's a wife thing at least for me I'm speaking for myself <laughs> exactly. like this is where you put the towels this is why would you do that and <laughs> that oh yeah they they could be have something that I have no idea like that's yeah. really useful yeah I could be learning there you go yeah soak it on <laughs> So navigate, and if anybody has questions on this, please interrupt me. Um, so navigate, this one's really kind of um, powerful. This is a way to um, describe getting into the sage power of navigate is um, activating your elder self and asking him or her, what would you do? And I don't know if y'all remember that. What would, what would Jesus do? Um, campaign that was years ago. It, this it makes me think of what would Jesus do, and so I think of okay, well, what would my elder self do? <laughs> so you go back. You well, you don't go back. You flash forward mm -hmm. and actually think of you know picture yourself in you know I, I might have a bun when I'm older too, and probably glasses, um, with gray hair, grayer, and you know hopefully on the beach, and then you visit that self and give her a hug, hand, shake his hand, whatever, you know, is appropriate for you. I'm just visualizing in my mind and just say, you know, how would you change the situation? What would you have done? What should I be doing? And, and if you can, you know, really tap into that, you know, what is your elder wiser self mm -hmm. going to tell you is, I mean, do you think it's going to be, you know, tell him what to do because you know it's not it's going to be you know let him find a way <laughs> as a mom and um he needs to learn for himself you know you can't always tell him what to do he's almost 18 um you know and then and then you're you're gonna also find that you will empathize with yourself because you're learning from your elder self and you are forgiving yourself for some of your past mistakes as well. But going forward, um, that elder self can really talk to you and help you navigate through problems, navigate through issues, um, challenges. 
and help help make some changes and activate that sage part of your brain. Um, what was the name of that movie? And I and I'm looking up Bruce Willis, and it was a and I think the name name of the movie something like Big, but it wasn't wasn't Big, um, but Big was um, funny. Yes, but Bruce Willis was in a movie. Uh, I can't find it. Um, was it his voice? Was no, no, it was actually Bruce Willis, and okay. he had a younger self. He came um, came to visit mm -hmm. him, and then the older self. Oh. And it really, and it 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 sort of taught him. Okay, looking back at his childhood, mm -hmm. um, oh, gosh. Um, the no, kid? No, yeah, the kid, the kid. Very yeah. good, excellent. The kid. Excellent. The kid, the kid. Oh. yeah. Great movie on, wow. on child and, Interesting. and adult self. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun. Thanks for remembering that. Yeah. Um, when I looked that one up and watched that one again. Yeah, I know. I want you to. So activate. Um, I had Bruce Willis. Um, Preempt the saboteurs, activate and in, in, um, preempting the saboteurs. There's kind of a few different ways. It's like realizing your hands on that hot stove. That's like number one. Hey, I'm I'm still mad about this and I'm not, it's not serving me well. It's I'm not going anywhere with this. That's that's one step. And then um, playing with your saboteurs. When that judge comes to sit on your shoulder. And then you realize the controller's there with it or whatever that's weighing you down. It's like when you when you realize one of them's appearing and it's like, hey, what took you so long? <laughs> you play with them. It's like, hey, I've been waiting for you or, you know, thanks for showing up and telling me how horrible that I'm doing. I'm used to that. So you can just go away now, you know, get, get, get off my shoulder. So you can kind of play with them a little bit in that way. Um, and, and this graphic that I see you've been taking notes on, Bob, I'm so glad that, thank you for printing these out for me. So the, the strategy is basically weakening your saboteurs. One of those is just playing with them, but the other way is basically strengthening your sage and by building that PQ brain muscle, the sage, um, the sage powers or what you're going to be building and um this what do they call it the sage mindset um is the realization that you know okay i'm going to make something i'm going to find an opportunity in every challenge that comes to me today as opposed to waking up on the wrong side of the bed you know, probably the left side of the bed <laughs> you know that it's like oh no nah, you know I have to do this today. I have to do that report today. Great. It's going to be a bad day. You know, that's staying in that negative emotion. But then if you realize, you know, gosh, um, realize that's stressing me out. So how is that serving me? I'm not even going to do it, you know? So how can I, how can I weaken these saboteurs? And these are ways to do it. So we are going to do an activity and I'm going to show you what happens with these PQ exercises. And it's gonna take two minutes. Anybody have any questions? Are you ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is just an example of what Heidi and I do about five times a day. And it's um, part of the program. Um, it's part of the app. Program comes with an app and that's kind of cool because it, your phone <laughs> and says, okay, time to strengthen your PQ muscle. Mm -hmm. And there's these little two, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter minute um, activities. And I'm going to play one for us and we're going to do it all together. He's going to ask us to close our eyes. So I'm going to do that. It's just everybody kind of gets relaxed and into, um, you get more, you're going to get into your body a little bit out of your head. And um, some of these deal a little bit more with nature. Um, this one in particular is gonna be kind of about um, just being mindful of what's going on in your body, all right? So are y'all ready? Mm -hmm. I thought I was, <laughs> here we go. Okay. This is gonna be fun because you're gonna hear 
Sure. Spine is a sure sign. He has such a fun accent. Please sit comfortably with your spine straight and relaxed. Your head straight, your chest open, your feet flat on the floor. Please close your eyes when you're ready. Now do some reps with your sense of touch. Rock two fingertips gently against each other with such a tension that you can feel the fingertip ridges on both fingers. Now rub all the fingertips of one hand gently against the fingertips and palm of the other hand and notice all those sensations. Now put your right hand on your stomach and notice the gentle rising and falling of your stomach with each breath. Take your time, and whenever you feel ready, open your eyes. Okay, so that was two minutes. All right, and I'm gonna um, submit it so I get credit for it in the <laughs> PQ gym on my app. And thank y'all for doing it with me. So. Other than the alarm going outside the fire engine or whatever. Oh, that was good. I know. It was like the breathing. It's like, what? I didn't <laughs> hear it. Oh, boy. Did you didn't hear it. You were into it. So what do you think? How did that feel then? Uh, I like getting out of the way. <laughs> cool. It's quiet. Quiet. Yeah. It was relaxing. The peace and calm. The relaxing, mm -hmm. I thought, too. Yeah. And it's funny because it's hard, I think, to really kind of feel your, the ridges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, focus. Huh? You have to, you focus. really have to focus. And sometimes I have to use my fingernail because then I can like, okay. And now I can kind of feel like I'm scraping it. And then I, I'm like, golly, have I worked really that hard doing the dishes? And they're gone. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Lots of <laughs> <laughs> um, but then when you, sometimes I'll catch myself, like going like this. And, you know, it's something I've done in the past, but I've never thought about, you know, oh, it's, it's the sensations of your palm are really sensitive. And so when some people just, you know, have their habits of when they're sitting around, and and when you see somebody else like going like this, like, oh, I wonder how, I wonder what they're feeling, <laughs> you know. Um, and then, so it quiets your brain. And that's kind of one of the things is basically just a quiet and calm. Um, but some of these other exercises that are so cool um, will actually ask you to, instead, it's like they use all of your senses. This one was really just the touch. And um, one of them will, will have you um, listen to what the farthest noise is away that you can, or sound that you can hear. Like at that instance, it was the fire truck <laughs> or whatever. And then what's the closest sound that you can hear, you know, after 20 seconds or whatever. And he'll prompt you to, in, in, you know, if it's not, you know, the chair moving or whatever, it's like, if it's not your own breathing, he kind of reminds you, you should, if you're really thinking about it, you, you will hear your own breathing. And that is the closest thing you can 
you can think of. And then even the, or you can hear, and then there's some visual, like um, really focus on something and then, you know, focus on something that, so that that's out of your, your vision. Um, I was doing that on you earlier. I was noticing how pink your blush is and how it goes so nice with the color of your orange shirt and how the orange shirt is just like good for your skin. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. And like I did it on you with your eyes because they're like, I I was wondering that. (laughs) I just really noticed that. Yeah. And so, and I noticed your green shirt earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, but there are, you know, it's in, in really what it, all boils down to is being present mm-hmm. and you know noticing things around you or about others and um being in the moment and guess what it's going to make them feel because it's not what we say or, or sometimes what we do but it's how we make people feel that is truly what people remember and what makes the impact on them. So with relationships and things in, in your sales. His um, story in that book about that couple, like they went on a retreat together, yeah. which I thought was kind of awkward. Cause you know, like, come on, honey, let's go to a nice hotel with my coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Cause he's talking about being in this nice hotel room with this couple and just like how uncomfortable it was. Mm-hmm. And you know, the tension between the two and how they wouldn't talk to each other. Then he got them talking. They were doing some of the yes and and things like that. But like he was talking about doing like PQ reps with each other and really like paying attention to what the other person is saying, how their inflection, their voice changes and things like that. And just how Mm -hmm. you can do these PQ reps when you're talking to your your spouse or significant other just for two minutes, Mm -hmm. how that can change your relationship. Because in the moment you actually are listening to what they're saying rather than like, and they feel it and they feel it, they get it. But, um, and, and there's breathing, not only, you know, feeling it going in and out. I mean, sometimes you can feel your whole body with your breath and he points that out. And then or the temperature, the your temperature breath. going in and out of your nostrils. It's just stuff that I'm like, I would never thought of all this, you know, but it does it, the fact that it uses all of the senses. It's really kind of interesting to me because it will take you out of your head and all those thoughts and the negative talk. And, and get into your body. And, and some of it is, and some of this is while you're walking or moving, some of it's while sitting, some of it's um, tactile, you know, feeling. And so um, when, interestingly, you know, when, when, I'm, when I'm walking, he'll say, you know, pay attention to the bottom of your feet and feel all those sensations. And, but even before you start that, when you do start, it's like, pay attention to your body. What's calling to you? Is it um, something you smell around you? Is it something you're hearing? You know, again, when I'm on a walk and the other day I was like, you know, okay, I'm, I can hear the traffic and I'm like, you know, oh, I smell some flowers. No, nah, I'm hungry. <laughs> That's what it was. I'm like, whoa, that was, that just came out. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I forgot to eat lunch. I can't wait to have snack when I get home, you know, I mean, so it's like, no, that's what I, that's what my body was telling me. And, you know, interestingly, so it, it's just, there's all kinds of those. And that this just gave you an mm-hmm. example. Is it like so mindfulness? It is a very, um, mindfulness is a big part of it. In okay. my opinion, to me, it's, it's mindfulness, um, mindset, reframe, the, you know, reframe work, a uh, little bit of EQ. If you've heard of emotional intelligence, because again, paying attention and really listening is part of a, an emotional talent intelligence program. I've not done one, but I've heard of it. And then there are evidently like what 28 factors within EQ, but there's only 10 and five, there's like 15 things to pay attention to here and to really build on the five as opposed to the 28 and EQ. So this kind of brings it into one for me. Um, but there's so many other, like you, like you said, you just read that TED mm-hmm. thing, and I'm yeah. thinking, is that TED Talks? Nope. Sounds like it's different. it's different, but it's all, there's so many <clears throat> things that are interrelated, and, you know, just, this is, this is just something that really spoke to me, so 
-hmm. It's very cool. I think when you put this into a nutshell, like I come from the vision of habits and this yeah. is a habit that you're retraining your brain. Mm -hmm. Initially, the habit was you're judging a situation and you get these negative feelings that go with it. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to switch it. You pay attention to when that's yeah. happening. And now instead of going that way, you're going to go with the sage voice. And to help you where you're building this muscle is if you're thinking back to that uh, graphic that she had with the two faces and the dudes in the middle. So when you're doing the PQ rep, you're putting yourself into neutral in the middle spot. Mm -hmm. And when you put yourself into neutral, it quiets that the negative voices mm -hmm. and allows you to hear the voice of the sage. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. And coming from the Silva method, I've been trying to figure out, well, how could I go to alpha once an hour? Because that's what they tell you to do. And that's what we're doing when we do a PQ rep. You're slowing your brain waves down to the alpha brain waves rather than beta, which is where we are. Right now, we're thinking, we're reasoning like high Fresh. level of energy in our brain right mm -hmm. now. But when we do a PQ rep, we bring it down to alpha. And in that state of mind, that's when you get to hear your intuition and you get insight that you normally wouldn't hear because yeah. your uh, normal chatter is just too loud. Very cool. Mm. So that's what resonates with me with the program is everybody is so busy. This is a very quick way. In two minutes, you can do this. And even if your brain wanders 50% of the time, which it will, mm -hmm. in that two minutes, yeah, it will. you just pull it back in that two minutes and you do it. Yeah. And the more you do it when you're not in a situation of your sage mm -hmm. yelling at you, that's when you're building the muscle because you're not fighting against it at that moment. So now when you see it, you can go, oh, oh, that's my judge right now making me feel bad. I want to listen to the sage. Can you do a PQ rep? Mm -hmm. And now you can hear the sage voice louder than the voice over here going like, oh, hey, like, <laughs> you know, like. I don't hear that anymore. In fact, I hear how we're not going to die over here. Which is yeah. Fun. Slide nicer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so with that, how do you feel like that could help, you know, you with clients? What do you think? Yeah. So if, if I can get a client, um, so if I have a client that is really in a negative, negative state, um, how do you, how do you pull them out of it? How do you, first of all, get them to listen? Um, become a client maybe mm -hmm. uh, because they may not even be accepting it the concept mm -hmm. um yeah <laughs> good question um but um part of this coaching actually if if you know you've got a client that's not in a good mode and maybe you're not mm -hmm. um you know we all have bad days and maybe my saboteurs are kind of taking over and I come into a coaching session um Part of this is doing the PQ reps. So mm -hmm. asking that client to, you know, hang on, we're going to quiet our minds for mm -hmm. a minute and do this with me. Close your eyes mm -hmm. and feel your feet on the floor, you know, assuming they're sitting. Yeah. Feel your feet on the floor. Um Rub your hands and your palms together. Mm -hmm. I, I think that if somehow you could find out where they are, mm -hmm. you know, are they in, in the judge area? Are they doubting themselves? Yes. Or are there circumstances yeah. that are causing them to be in the hole? Right. And then to try to draw out what, what accomplices mm -hmm. they're dealing with. Exactly. Um, yeah. That gives you a better idea of yeah. kind of how to approach them. And right. what are the negative emotions that you're actually experiencing? Right. right. I, mm -hmm. I'm a perfect question right there. Yeah. You what are that in your evaluation? Yeah. Right. You know, it's, right. Is it shame? Is it guilt? Is it yeah. frustration? Is it um, what blame? Victim. Okay. Then how is that serving you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... And that's something that we can work yeah, on. Yeah, that is something yeah, we can work on. Is that something you want to keep your hand on the hot stove now? Yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah. that one may work. I yeah. love that. Yeah. And, um, you know, there there is a way to quiet. So you could start with quieting your brain and then asking those questions. But yes. asking those questions first might actually be better depending on yeah. where they are, you know, sure. in their upsetness. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Have you ever had a client that is so far removed that um, they, they don't see the purpose? And the I haven't point of it? done that yet. No, I, I just, um, but I, I really just started to incorporate this. Uh -huh. I've actually done it um, for about a year and I've, I've run a pod. Um, I've had one pod and um, one person actually said it saved their marriage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And well done. <laughs> I know. And that wasn't anything about job search. Sure. And um but that just happens to be my niche and my focus is, okay, well, how can I bring this into my coaching that I focus on? Um, but it's confidence. Mm -hmm. Confidence is what I have gotten from my clients that, you know, the, this builds my confidence because I'm not talking badly about myself anymore. Right. And, or I realize when I'm doing it, I can get out of it a lot quicker yeah. because we're all going to do it every once in a while. Nobody's going to get to the Jedi um, 100%, you know, always. You'd be in one of those Buddhist monk colonies if you were. And um, <laughs> you'd be happy all the time and I'm, I'm close. meditating all the time. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, My wife was asking me the other day, she said, well, how was your day? And I, of course, I said wonderful or fantastic or whatever it was. And she said, Every day is fantastic for me. So how do, don't you have a, a scale then? <laughs> Super uh, fantastic. Yeah, so, so sometimes it's amazing and sometimes it's just, it's just somewhat amazing. Uh, okay. Um, but um, but yeah, everything's on the positive side. So, um, uh, but I'm not there yet. So. Well, and, and you know what? Somebody might die in a day yeah. and that makes your day not so great. That is like a totally different situation when somebody is grieving um, it is actually on the very sage side. Yes. And it's it's all about love and empathy right. and missing them mm -hmm. and grief. And so what what happens is, you know, so so I don't know if you can really answer that if you lose somebody and yeah. you come home, you know, and tell yeah. your friend it's a great day, you know. Um, you know, in in just reality. But when that's the case with, you know, somebody may have gotten hit by a car, they're very sick or, or in the hospital, whatever. And you have to really focus on, you know, you know, let's, let's hope they recover. If somebody stays in that grieving period after a death for a, an unhealthy period, whatever that period may be, yeah, sure. then that's, that's where right, they, right, that's yeah, the unhealthy. Right. And, and it's like, okay, well, how is this serving you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to move on. Yeah because they would want you to move on and that's their love for you i don't know if you remember aurora winter winters mm -hmm. uh out in california so she is a grief coach oh and, yeah and she's fantastic and she basically says you know um uh, it's a myth to say that time heals um you just have to decide when you're when you're ready mm -hmm. then there's a way there's a path out of it yeah um, so somebody it's is not suffering. the same for everybody yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we've got about a minute okay, yeah. uh, left. Well, so, Layla, have you read the book, um, Think Like a Monk, by Jay Sheedy? No. I'm in the process of it now, but I think you would enjoy. Well, there was, there was, um, that, that does sound interesting. He's got, he's got a very active Facebook uh, toasting that he does. You know, and I don't do Facebook. Very inspirational. Well, that's not a bad 